today's episode, we're going to take this beautiful stock image by Simon Matzinger. Uh, and this image is found on unsplash.com. They offer free stock images, which is really nice. A little shout out to unsplash.com. So we're going to take this image and today we're going to, going to be looking at Topaz Studio again. Topaz Studio 2 to be in fact, and we're looking at the brightness and contrast filter. So let's go ahead and open up Topaz Studio 2. I thought today we'd open it up as a standalone application. So I just click the uh, Topaz Studio 2 icon. There's a little parrot. Now we're going to click open an image. So I'm going to click this here. And I saved this image by Simon Matzinger to my download. So I'm going to give that a click and choose open. I'm working on a Mac today. So here we go. There's our image brought into Topaz Studio 2. The first thing we want to do is come up to Add Filter, give that a click, and then we're looking at the Brightness and Contrast adjustment today, so let's click on Brightness and Contrast. Let's look at the Brightness and Contrast. Of course, we have our Opacity slider here. We have our Blend Modes. We have a Reset icon right here to reset it. We have this little X. And remember this little X, if you give it a click, and say you've made an adjustment, let's adjust the brightness like this. And if you click the X here, you are not getting rid of your adjustment, you're just getting rid of the adjustments being displayed right here. Just come back up to brightness and contrast, that particular layer, give it a click and it's open back up again. Remember that each and every Topaz Studio filter has these apply presets attached to them. It's a little drop down, so if you click it, you see all the different uh, presets that Topaz gives us. Let's go ahead and reset what I've just done, and let's take a look at some of these presets. So here's one called black and white negative. Let's take a look. It's a black and white negative. Pretty interesting. Let's hit the uh, reset button here. Let's take a look at another one. Uh, there's one called brighter. Let's give that a click. Okay, that's looking nice. That's brighter. Um, we can also just, instead of hitting the reset, we can just come here and just click on another preset. Like, let's do color pop. Hmm, that's kind of interesting. Uh, let's take the one brighter. All right, let's go with that one. Now, this will rough us, get us to a roughed in place. And we might have to come here and tweak it a little bit. I think it's a little too bright. So let me just pull this brightness control back a little bit. Now this is a basic filter. So we have brightness, contrast, and saturation. So there's brightness. That's looking like it's at a pretty nice place. The contrast was bumped up from the preset. So let's just give it a slight bit more. I'm going to use my up arrow and down arrow just to tweak it into the place I like. I'm going to say right there looks pretty good. And then we have the saturation slider. We can give it more saturation. We can give it less saturation, depending what we want, what look we're going for. I'm just going to give it just a slight bit more saturation right there. But that's the filter right there. It's pretty basic. Brightness, contrast, and saturation. After you've made your adjustment and you think, well, maybe I've gone a little overboard with the adjustment, you could come back and readjust these sliders. But you can also come to the opacity slider and just pull this back a little bit. A lot of times I like to take these sliders and pull them the whole way back and then just slowly build them back up to a point that I like. So in this case, I might say, you know what, right about there. And remember my little trick. If you click on the actual image itself with your left click of your mouse, give it a press, you'll see the before and after. So that's pretty nice. And of course, you have these other viewing options up here that we've talked about before. The brightness contrast filter is a pretty basic filter, so I thought I'd throw in a bonus today with this video. I want to show you how to dodge and burn your image. Now, there are many ways of dodging and burning your image. And dodging and burning basically means you can lighten certain areas of the image brighter and darken areas darker, giving more visual impact to your image. Let me show you how to do this. This is one particular method I'm going to show you. There's many different ways. And, and through these training videos, I'm going to cover a bunch of different ways to dodge and burn. But for now, let's use this particular method. What we're going to do is come up to Add Filter. Now, once you come into Add Filter, you can choose, honestly, any one of these filters here. But let's just choose the uh, Brightness Contrast because that's what we're working with today. We're going to give that a click. When we do, we added another Brightness and Contrast filter here. And what we're going to do is leave all these adjustments right where they are. The only thing we're going to do is work with Blend Modes. 
and let's go to the blend modes here right now we're in the normal mode let's give this drop down menu a click and go down to multiply that darkens we're going to use that for darkening the image or burning the image and then we're going to go down to the one called screen we're going to use screen for lightening the image we're going to start out with screen so let's just give that a click so with this method of dodging what we need to do is hide our adjustment to do that i'm going to show you about masking today so let's come up here to this little masking icon this little circle the little black circle inside this white rectangle give that a click that opens up our masking dialog now right now you see a white mask meaning every that the screen mode adjustment shows through the mask because it's white it reveals what we've just adjusted and that is put the image into the screen mode making it lighter now we want to conceal that adjustment so we need to come to this little little section right here it's a little menu these three little dots give that a click that's the mask menu and come to invert and that'll turn this mask black hiding the adjustment or concealing the adjustment let's have some fun now right in the center here what if we had a nice glow coming out of this forest here wouldn't that be nice to do that let's come over to the mask here now at the mask we have all these different tools we have a brush a spot a graduated filter uh, color luma or luminosity and adjust section here we're going to get into all these sections eventually but today we're just looking at two we're looking at spot and brush let's start out with the spot because it's perfect for what we want to do adding a glow here so let's click on spot and we got this spot and you'll see this spot has this red circle in the center that's the target area where most of the adjustments going to be and then the adjustment will transition itself out through uh it'll graduate out gradiate out this way okay so it'll get softer and softer as it goes out but the main bulk of the effect will be here in the center so let's find a spot where we think it's going to go right there now let's look over here at these different controls we have transparency transparency we'll go over this in a second we have roundness transition and edge aware and we'll go over all these so first off let's go to roundness so you can just see what this is doing you see you can change the shape of it here to get it back to the original position, just double click around this and gets it back. And then transition, we can adjust how the transition is going to affect, how it's going to graduate out. Let's double click that. And then edge where you'll see that in a second. Let's go ahead and start to add the glow here. So what we need to do is right here, it says spot selection right under it, transparency. Let's start to move the transparency slider to the right. And when we do watch this mask right here. And also watch the image change. See, we're starting to let that glow come through. Isn't that really awesome? So we're going to come up a little bit and get that glow looking kind of really nice there. So say maybe somewhere in there. And then edge aware right here. When I move this edge aware to the right, it's going to start clinging more to certain areas of the image. Like it, it'll probably mask out the trees and things like that, which will make this look really nice. I don't know if you can see here. I'll try to zoom in so you can see it as I move this edge of where. See if I move it in and move it out. I'm going to take it the whole way to the right. Okay, now I'm going to play with this transparency some more right here. Just so I get it looking just right. And I'm thinking right about there. Now see these little handles on here? I can take this and just move this spot in a little bit, not make it quite as big. And I can move this around. See, I can move this all over the place here add light here so you can have fun and create with this but I want to get it right in this area right in here and I think that looks nice and then if I like that I can just hit apply and let's come up here to the little eyeball and see the before and after so let's click that there's the before and there's the after a nice little glow there I like that now when I click brightness and contrast that'll bring the adjustments back up again now, the next thing I want to do is rename this layer so I know what it is. And let's um, right-click this layer here and say Rename. And then down here, see where it says Brightness Contrast? Let's name that uh, Forest Glow. I highly recommend uh, naming your layers because when you do, you can get back to them. You know where they're at. Imagine if you had 15, 20 layers here and you say, where's that forest glow at? You'd never be able to find it. So name your layers. It's a good thing to do. Now let's work on the road here a little bit. I like this light playing through here. So maybe I want to bump up some of this light here on the road here. 
and over in here a little bit. And so what we're going to do is come up to add filter. Let's grab ourselves another brightness and contrast layer. Again, we're not going to touch these controls, but now we're going to go to the blend modes and come to screen, which lightens everything up. Let's go back up to our mask here, our mask icon, give it a click, come down, let's invert our mask so we hide the adjustment. And this time, let's grab the brush tool. So let's give the brush tool a click right here. And right now, the transparency is set to black. So I want to add a little bit of light here. So what I'm going to do is take this transparency, move it up a little bit. And as I do, see this color here start from black starts changing to various gray tones the whole way up into white. I just want to add a little bit of light here, not a bunch of light. If I move this the whole way to the right, I'll add massive amounts of light in here. But I just want to add a little bit of light. So what I'm going to do is just move this, bump this up a little bit right to here and take a test brushing. I'm going to brush right in here, but I my brush tool is already set. So what I'm going to do is we can change the radius of our brush by moving this radius and see in the center of the screen, you can see the brush size change a little bit. So let's just get that brush the size we want and come here and just give it a little brush through here. Right out through here. And there we go. Now let's take this opacity and let's just pull this back. We can see it. See that little bit of extra light? Not too much, but that looks nice. Now here I might want to add a little pop of light, but this time maybe not quite as much. So let me pull this transparency back a little bit more, maybe right around in here, and just run a little bit of a brush right down through here a little bit, and just add that little bit of light, and then maybe over right in here, add a little light there, maybe just a smidge of light right in here. There, it adds a little bit of light. Let's uh, pull this opacity back. Let's pull it up. So look, I can fine tune this just by moving this upper back. Find a little spot that we like. Adding a little bit of light. Now let's come up to the eyeball. We can come up to the eyeball here too and look at the before and after by clicking the eyeball. Before that and after that. I like that effect. Let's go ahead now and rename our layer. So let's come up here to the brightness contrast, give it a right click and say rename. Come right here and let's call that, uh, let's call it light on road, light on road. Okay, and there we see light on road, forest glow, and that's the original brightness contrast adjustment. Now let's do some burning and burning is darkening uh, parts of the image. So I'm just thinking, let's accent the light we just did by darkening areas in between the light. Okay, just to make those light areas glow even more. All right, so we're playing light against darks, which is a really cool thing to do. So what we're going to do is we need to get another adjustment layer. And remember I said, you can use any adjustment layer. So let's come up here to add filter and Let's just for the heck of it, grab one of these, except I wouldn't grab the AI clear because it actually does make an adjustment when you click it. But let's just grab one like, let's say curves. All right. We're not going to do anything to this curve. So the image is not changed, but we're just going to come here and change its blend mode to multiply, which makes the image go dark. Now, all we need to do is come up to its layer mask, give icon here, give that a click come down, invert the mask, which hides it. And now we're going to brush in some black areas on the image. So let's go to the brush and take the transparency. Again, I don't want things to go to super black. I just want them to go a little darker. So let's just pull this transparency up a little bit and test this out. So we can adjust our radius of our brush, make it larger, or smaller. We can also adjust the softness, how soft that brush is going to be. Let's make it a relatively soft brush. I'm usually right around 50% on my softness, by the way. So let's just come down in here. I think the brush is a little too big in the radius. So let's make it a little bit smaller. I'm going to come like right here, paint a little bit of, see how that darkened there a little bit? And I think that's good. And I'm going to paint right in here. Ooh, just a little bit of darkness. Maybe let's kiss a little darkness over here. Maybe a little bit in here, a little bit more over here. Maybe let's just throw a little bit of darkness back in there. Maybe let's throw a little darkness right in here. That looks pretty nice. Let's pull the opacity back. And now let's pull the opacity up. 
See how that's just really, and I like it up at full blast there. Now let's come up to the icon here, the little eye icon, give that a click. There's the before and after. But you see how nice that works? Dodging and burning is a really awesome thing. Let's not forget to rename our layer in case we need to go back to it later and make some readjustments. So let's come up to the curves layer here and give it a click and then right click and click on rename and let's rename it. Let's call this darken parts of road. All right, and that's our tutorial for today. So today we went over the brightness and contrast filter. A very basic and easy filter to use, but a powerful, um, a powerful filter, which you'll use a lot. And I also showed you a variation on that filter and we used it to dodge and burn our image. And again, dodging and burning is a very powerful way to add a lot of impact to your image and really take a sometimes a mediocre image and turn it into a very beautiful image with a lot of power and light emanating and you're playing light against darks and it's just a really good artistic technique to do. So I highly recommend it. I use it all the time in my images. Well, if you like this video today, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And also, if you have not yet subscribed to my channel, please do so. I really appreciate it. I really appreciate that support. It helps me out a lot. Well, I'll see you next time right here in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. Have a wonderful day.